All right, guys, so this is one of my favorite projects of this course. This is going to be a GitHub finder where we can search GitHub users by username and it'll give us their profile. It'll give us all their information. It'll give us a list of their repositories and links to them. Show us how many forks, how many watchers, things like that. So this is the interface. We're actually we're using Bootstrap 4, but we're using something called Bootstrap, Bootstrap Swatch which gives you kind of a customized look in terms of colors and fonts. And all you need to do is include the CDN. You just need to include an external link. Um, but let's go ahead and do a search here. So if I just type something in, if I put a B in, it's going to reach out to GitHub using, uh, we're actually using async await and we're using the fetch API to get the user from GitHub. Not only is it going to get the uh, the user profile stuff here, but it's going to make another request to get the repositories, the latest five repositories. And this input right here is connected to a key down event. I think it's key down or key up. So every time I type in, it's going to make a request to GitHub looking for this username. So you'll see BR. This is whatever the user BR is. We'll do BRA, BRAD. So this use this is the Brad user. We'll put in Brad T. So that's a user. Okay, now when there's no user, it's going to just pop up with a user not found and it's going to stay on the current user. So we'll continue. I'm just spelling out my name here. There's no user with this. Trav. Put an E in there. Put an R. So there is actually a user called Brad Traver. Let's put an S in there. No user. And let's put a Y and we reach my profile. All right, and you can see my latest repositories. We have the the number of repositories, gist, the followers, following, all that stuff. All right, and if we clear this out completely, it's just going to go back and the profiles disappear. So this actually takes advantage of a lot of the stuff that we've learned so far. A lot of the the um, the ES6 plus stuff, uh, async await, fetch. We're going to use, we're going to create a github.js file that will take care of actually reaching out to the API. Not only that, but we're going to create a UI class to handle inserting stuff into the DOM. For instance, when a profile gets inserted like this or, or, or the repos get inserted, that's going to be handled in the user interface class. So we're going to kind of break our application up a little bit uh, more than we have been with the past, uh, you know, the, the few small projects that we've done. So one thing with the GitHub API, if we look this up here, um, it's it's actually a pretty nice API. I really like it. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, but one thing that they have, a restriction they have, is that you can only make about 100 requests per hour without an API key. And we're making a request every time we type something in here. So you're going to quickly run out. So what you need to do is register your application with GitHub and you get an API key and uh, an API secret or a client ID and a client secret. I forget the exact URL, so I'm just going to search for register. Uh, Let's search for register GitHub OAuth. And it's this link right here. It's uh, github.com slash setting slash application slash new and you have to be logged in as well. All right, so you'll just register that, put in your homepage URL, just put in localhost, um, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, any kind of description, authorization, callback. Let me actually see what I have for mine because I already have this registered. So yeah, I just put in, I actually have localhost 8100 here because I, I did this for an application I built a while ago. And then I have the same for the callback. So, th so those really don't matter. Um, and it's fine if you guys see the secret. You can always just reset these as well. Now, one thing I want to mention is that if we go and we view the source code and we click on the GitHub JS file, you're going to see the client ID and the client secret right there in the in the constructor. And this isn't something you would want to do in production. If this was an, an application you were actually going to put into production, you'd want you'd want to have some kind of server where you make a request and you get this stuff from the server behind the scenes without it being visible in the browser like this. 
Um, I mean, you know, there, there's really no reason for people to take your GitHub secret key and use it. They can just create their own, but it's really not good practice. And I just wanted to mention that um, to you guys. So uh, it really doesn't matter in this situation because this is all for just learning purposes. This isn't something we're going to deploy. So go ahead and register an application. Like I said, I already have one registered, so I'm not going to do that. But just go ahead and fill that fill that form out and you'll have this new OAuth app and you should have your keys. All right. And then you'll be ready to get started. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our user interface. Now it's going to be pretty simple because most of the stuff is going to be generated in our UI class that we're going to create. So the actual HTML will be pretty minimal. So I'm going to create a, a folder here. I'm going to call it GitHub Finder. And let's open that with VS Code. All right, and then we're going to create a couple different files here. We want our index.html file. We're going to want an app.js, which will be our main uh, JavaScript file. Then we're going to have github.js. And then we're going to have ui.js. Okay, so we'll have a GitHub class and a, and a UI class. We're going to be using ESX classes for this application. And again, if you want to kind of do the reverse of what we've been doing, you can go and do the ES5 prototypes and remake the application that way after if you want. Um, what, what I'm doing here, creating separate files, we haven't done this really yet. We've been doing everything in this in one single app.js file. So to do this, we'll just have to have multiple script tags in our index HTML. Now, when you get into ES6 modules, which aren't supported in the browser yet, uh, you'll have to use something like Webpack along with Babel to transpile your code to be able to have modular file modular JavaScript will you'll be able to actually include one JavaScript file into another and we're going to learn about that later on but for now we're just going to have to have multiple script tags all right so that's kind of kind of the old way of doing it but we will get into webpack and Babel later on so let's start off just creating our UI so I'm going to put in exclamation tab just to get some head and body tags in here let's change this to github finder and then like I said we're going to be using something called bootswatch which is really cool let's go to bootswatch I think it's bootswatch.com and they basically just give you different um, variations of, of a bootstrap template now I stopped using this for a while because they they were using bootstrap 3 which you can still use if you click this link but they recently updated to bootstrap 4 so now I'm back to using them I just think it's cool to switch up the design uh, what we're going to use is the where is it this right here this litera litera template so if we just click download it'll bring us right to a link that we can copy you can download this and include it locally if you want, but I'm just going to grab the link and just put it up here inside of a link tag just like that. And we should be all set. Now, we're not going to need. Well, actually, we should put in the, the JavaScript. I was going to say we, we, we don't need the uh, bootstrap JS, but just in case it's a good idea to, to include it. So let's go to getbootstrap.com get started and we're going to grab these three links here so we'll grab those and let's let's actually snap that to the side and we can close that up and then we're going to put these links down at the bottom and then let's make, be sure to include our script tags now the order is is pretty important we want the github to be the first one So we're going to say github.js. Okay, and then after GitHub, we'll do the ui.js. And then we want our app.js. Okay, and for the HTML body, again, it's going to be pretty simple. The nav bar isn't even going to have any links, so that's going to be really easy. We're going to create a nav tag with the class of navbar. Uh, let's see, we're going to do navbar 
dash dark, a class of BG dash primary and a class of MB3, which will give it margin bottom. Okay, and then inside here, we'll just put in a container. And then we're going to do the branding, which is going to be a link with the class of navbar dash brand. And for the for the title here, we'll just say uh, GitHub Finder. And that should be it for the navbar. So let's save this and open it up. I'm going to use live server. And there we go. So there's our navbar. Very simple. Let's close that up. And then under that, we need to put our form. So we're actually going to put a div here with the class of container. And I'm also going to give it a class of search container. And you'll see why later on. And then inside here, we'll have a class of search, a class of card, and a class of card body. Okay, and then we'll put an H1 and we'll say search GitHub users. And then under that H1, we're going to put a paragraph with the class of lead. And we're just going to say enter a username to fetch a user, uh, a user profile, uh, fetch a user profile and repos from GitHub. So save that. Actually, we'll get rid of the from GitHub. Okay, and then underneath the paragraph, we're just going to have an input. It'll have a type of text and we're going to give it an ID. Let's give it an ID of search user. We'll give it a class of form control, which is a, a bootstrap class. I'm sure you guys know that by now. And then a placeholder. So placeholder, we'll just say GitHub username. All right, and then under this div, we're going to put just a line break and then we're going to put a div with the class of or I'm sorry, the ID of profile. And this is basically just a placeholder. We're going to insert the profile through JavaScript into this element. So let's save that. And now we have our form. All right, so very, very simple UI. Actually, let's just create a footer real quick. We're going to go under the container. So down at the bottom here and just put in a footer. We're going to give it a class of MT5 margin top five P3, which is a padding three text center, which will center the text and then BG light, which will make it a light color. And then in the footer, I'm just going to say GitHub Finder, and we'll just put a little uh, copyright symbol. And there we go. So there's our UI. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. In the next one, we're going to start on our JavaScript and we're going to add an event listener to this form so that when we start to type, it fires off an event and then we'll continue on to reach out to the API and all that stuff. All right. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.